Good morning and welcome. It is nine o'clock. It is the eighth day of September 2021. I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the OG GM. And it is Wednesday, which means it's time to take a look at the crowdfunding projects that are coming to an end this week. And of course, because I can't go without complaining about the weather, it's a very strange, foggy, misty day here in Ventura, where there are plenty of other places currently right now that could use this fog and mist and rain way more than we could, right? So be careful out there. Anyways, let's take a look at all the crowdfunding projects that are coming to an end this week. As always, if any of these projects sound like something you want to support, Head on over to your friendly local game store, that's Zest Games and Anime here in Ventura, and ask them to look into it for you. You know I'm a big fan of crowdfunding because it's a great way for lesser known companies to get stuff out into the populace. Uh, we do have to, of course, now say that a lot of the crowdfunding projects have been delayed on meeting the requirements of their Kickstarter fulfillments. Uh, because of the shipping issues, um, like Lan the, we mentioned earlier that the Lancer RPG Kickstarter people, um, their Kickstarter was fulfilled. There are stuff that they still need to fulfill for the Kickstarter promises, but they have been suspended because of shipping COVID money stuff. That said, at the top of the list from Dagori Games, we have the Tanaris RPG for 5e. This is a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition source book. Most popular pledge is $250. Jesus Christ. Another million dollar Kickstarter. This one for 5e. Its main thing going for it. It has a lot of people who with some name recognition associated with it. Uh, such as Ed Greenwood, uh, Amy Vorpal, and Shane Hensley. Uh, we have a player's guide, a campaign source book, and an adventure source book. Other than that, we know very little about the world. It's a, it's a, except it's a source book, adventure, and miniatures world. It's set in a world of, you know, typical D&D adventuring parties. But the big thing, of course, is that they have a lot of names associated with it. Other than that... I have tried to look into what the game is actually about, and there's actually very little that I found out about it. So hopefully we will find out more as this Kickstarter needs its end. Congratulations for hitting a million dollars plus. $250 popular pledge. What do I better get a lot of free crap for a $250 pledge. Anyways, moving on. From Heartleaf Games, we have the Delver's Guide to Beast World, a 5e supplement and setting. This is a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition source book. Most popular pledge is $15. It would be, in a, it's a world of anthropomorphic characters. You travel about in a decked out customized wagon that lets you invest adventure in style. This source book offers 24 pieces, species, 12 new subclasses, 5 homelands, a customizable wagon rule, and more across 300 pe pages. Uh, other than that, this really doesn't tell me a lot about it. Anthropomorphic, if you don't know what that means, it means things that are not normally humanoid being humanoid. Perfect example, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are anthropomorphic. They're turtles, but they have humanoid features, and they can stand on two legs. Uh, Transformers, cars that turn into humanoid creatures. So anthropomorphic, that's the definition if you don't know what it means. From Mage Hand Press, we have Valda Spires of Secrets, a colossal expansion for D&D 5e. This is a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition source book. Most popular pledge is $60. Uh, it, it's a book of 5e options to expand your game. They all crunch, including 10 new classes, 150 subclasses, 5 new ancestries, etc., etc., etc. And more stuff for your 5th edition arsenal. As always... Please remind, let me remind you that before you bring this book to your game and before you introduce one of these subclasses, please make sure it is okay with your DM that you can actually play this in his game. Anyways, if you're looking for new ways to improve upon the crunch of your 5e game, check this out. From Roll for Combat for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and Pathfinder 2nd Edition, we have the Battle Zoo Beastry of monster hunting, pirates, and dragons. 
This is a source book for, as I said, D&D 5 and Pathfinder. The most popular pledge is $140. Uh, this is basically, apparently, Roll for a, was a 220 RPG Superstar contest using Pathfinder rules. These are all the winning entries from the contest, mostly monsters. So that's cool. Um, so these, I guess, are all the winners from the different aspects of the contest presented in sort of a monster manual type setting for Pathfinder and D&D 5e. Uh, we have the offset print edition of Stars Without Number from Sin Nominishing Publishing. This is, of course, the Stars Without Number new core rulebook, most popular pledge, $80. This campaign was to fund an offset print run of Stars Without Number. Uh, Stars Without Number, which I'm sort of running a game inspired by um, Stars Without Number right now by Kevin Cofford, is an award winning science fiction role playing game with lots of great tables for the world building in that setting. Uh, what an offset print run means is this this is a. Uh, Going to be expecting a nice four-color book with end sheets, ribbon bookmarkers, high-grade grade paper. If you're looking for a beautiful physical version of the award-winning Stars Without Numbers, this might be for you. And look, one thing that's not 5e, though it does use D20. So, yeah. From Low Storm Games, we have The Curse of the Bloodstone Isles. This is a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition source book. Uh... <laughs> We have a Game Master Cyclopedia and a Player's Gazette, each with over 200 pages about a pirate, zombie, vampire, spell jamming island that traverses space and time. Uh, this source book is most popular pledge is $90. Uh, looks like it's heavily inspired by the Hot Spring Islands. And we have a Kickstarter crowdfunder for the Ice and Dice Gaming Convention. This is a convention that hopes to be held at the Eastgate Ho Holiday Inn and Suites in Cincinnati, Ohio in January. Uh, most popular pledge is $35 for a three-day badge. So this is, your fan this is a chance to um, support a game convention and give it the money it needs to actually become a living, breathing convention as opposed to an idea. So if you're in the Cincinnati, Ohio area and you want a gaming convention around January, uh, check it out. From Plus One Experience Points, we have Down We Go Infinite Edition. This is a core rule book for an original system most popular pledge is $45. This is a rules light RPG where you play as one of four character archetypes that blend class, skills, and stats that you use a combination of D20 and D6 dice where you adventure and everything you need to adventure is on a, can be explained on a single piece of paper. And then you go and do dungeony stuff. From Bloke Games, we have Survive This. What Shadows Hide, the horror RPG two-book combo for the OSR. This is from the Bloat Game Survive This um, series. And this is a easy-to-play interactive horror role-playing game that offers two books instead of one full of horrible horror RPG zombies, stuff like that, doppelgangers, fairies, ghosts, Anything like that. So if you are a fan of the stuff that Bloat Games does and a fan of the Survive This series, which is a very OSR, hardcore uh, take on the D20 system, check this out. All right. So there we go. That's everything that's coming out. I wish the people who are doing Ice and Dice Gaming Conventions luck. I hope they are prepared to deal with covid Obviously very excited about the Kickstarter for Stars Without Numbers. Huge fan of the Stars Without Numbers stuff. Could do without so many 5e products, really, you know. So I'm happy to see Bloat Games doing something, even though they use D20. Um, yeah, people are still trying to ride the coattails of 5e and the fact that 5e is open source. 
the fact that you know that we've got this million dollar Tanaris RPG, which a lot of big names behind it, but we don't really know anything about it or how much input each of these people actually have with the product, as we learned earlier this year from the TSR debacle. Just because you have a name attached to it doesn't mean that name actually has really anything to do with the product. So there we go. If any of those sound like something you want to support, head on over to your friendly local game store, that's Ses Games Anime here in Ventura, and ask them to look into it for you. Until next time, as always, I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming. If you appreciate this content and want to hear more, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment to subscribe and help me hit 1,000 subs. And stay warm, stay safe, stay dry, stay awake, stay on time, stay off my land. I'll talk to you later.